Hi everybody, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. And today I am here with another installment way too late of my anti-hauls. You guys loved the first one that I did, which was in September of last year, and I really need to do more of these. Anti-hauls are something that were invented, invented, made popular by Kimberly Clark in the beauty community where she went through and said all the products that she would not be getting because consumerism can be crazy in the beauty world. I gave a little bit more explanation in the first one that I did, which I will link in a card up above. But essentially what I'm going to do is go over the books that I am not going to be buying or not interested in that are coming out in June. I will be doing another one of these that is for maybe each month. I'm going to try to get to more of these. A couple of them I'm really excited for, so I'm going to let you know what those are too. For right now, I'm going to go over the things that I am really not interested in purchasing in June, even if maybe eventually I read them. I might get them from my library. I might try the audiobook, but I'm not going to be purchasing like a physical copy of this book. And I'll let you know why too. There's reasons behind everything, but also keep in mind that every single reader reads differently. They enjoy different things. This is just, for me personally, things that I am not interested in getting in June. It does not mean that it's not a good book. It does not mean that it's not a talented author. It just means, for me, these are things that I will not be falling into the hype or buzz around. That's my disclaimer. went down like the popular books that Goodreads has listed for June releases and I'm just going to let you know the things that I'm not interested in and then I'll also let you know some of the things that I am interested in. Well, first up I'm trying to go by like date of release and June 5th a couple of books come out. Actually, I actually have three books that are coming out on June 5th that I am not interested in and I'll let you know why. The first up being Save the Date by Morgan Matson, and this was one that I like looked at and I kept going back to it. I kept looking at it a couple times and I'm like I know I can definitely read this early. Should I read this? The answer for me is no. I just don't like that age of contemporary. I think high school contemporary for me is very, very difficult for me to get invested in, especially in a fluffy way, because I'm just so outside of that age group. This one is about Claire, whose older sister is getting married, and uh, Charlie can't wait, because for the first time in years, all four of her older siblings will be under the same roof. She's desperate for one last perfect weekend before the house is sold and everything changes. Um, the only problem is, is that it's shaping up to be an absolute disaster. There's an unexpected dog with a penchant for howling, relatives who aren't speaking. None of that sounds interesting to me. I'm sure there's some love interest, a neighbor hell-bent on sabotage. No, it's not for me. Uh, next up, another one that's not for me, it's another contemporary, and this is When Life Gives You Lululemons. This is by Lauren Weisenberg, who is also the best-selling author of The Devil Wears Prada, a novel starring one of her favorite characters from The Devil Wears Prada, Emily Charlton, who was the first assistant to Miranda Presley and is now a highly successful image consultant who just landed the client of a lifetime. Didn't get into The Devil Wears Prada. I actually did listen to the audiobook of that. It was probably one of my first audiobook experiences. I actually listened to it when I was healing from getting my LASIK surgery, and I enjoyed it enough that I went and saw the movie. Movie. Um, a friend of mine actually came over and sat with me during like my healing process and we listened to it together and then we actually went and saw the movie together. The movie was really cute but I don't feel like this far post that book releasing that I'm really invested in another one of the characters. I also just have no vested in interest in the fashion industry. This doesn't hold any appeal for those of you that were super into fashion or super into The Devil Wears Prada. This might be a book that is really interesting to you I'm just probably not going to read this one. Then we have a fantasy because you guys know I, I love my fantasy. I didn't want to just do all contemporary because contemporaries were probably not going to be my thing anyway. And this one also comes out on the 5th. Sorry, I've got my notes down here on my phone. And this is Bring Me Their Hearts and this is by Sarah Wolf. I'm not not interested in this book. I just don't think I'm going to run out and buy it. Right now it has decent ratings. There are uh, 67 ratings and it's a 4.3. So the ARC people have clearly been enjoying this. The cover is so super tropey. It's a girl in a red gown running through like a forest. The cover does nothing for me. Zira is heartless, the immortal unaging soldier of a witch and uh, bound to the witch night singer ever since she saved her from the bandits who murdered her family. Zira longs for freedom from the woods they hide in. Her heart is in a jar under the night singer's control and she has to serve the queen or the witch unquestioningly. And then she asks for the prince's heart in exchange for her own with one addendum. If she's discovered infiltrating the court, the Night Singer will destroy her heart rather than see her tortured by the witch-hating nobles. 
Prince Lucian hates the royal court as much as it loves him. Every tutor too afraid to correct him, yada yada yada. Until Lady Zira shows up, she is an elegant, smart-mouthed, carefree, and out for his blood. The prince's honor has him quickly aiming for her throat. So begins a game of cat and mouse where the winner literally takes the other's heart. It that doesn't sound like a premise that I'm necessarily interested in. I'm gonna wait and see. I know a couple people have read this that I know because I can see on Goodreads like their reviews. I see this marked as to read by a lot of my friends on in, on Goodreads. If people tell me like you really really need to read this then maybe this will not be one that I run out to get in June. This one comes out on the 19th of June and it is The Mermaid by Christina Henry. This has 55 ratings and it's a 4.24. This is from the author of Lost Boy. It's a historical fairy tale about a mermaid who leaves the sea for love and later finds herself in B.T. Bartom's American Museum as the real Fiji mermaid. However, leaving the museum might be harder than leaving the sea. I don't have any interest in like the freakish museum sideshow kind of a vibe. I don't have any interest in mermaid retellings or mermaid stories in general and the whole like leaving the sea thing like I don't I don't know. Once there was a mermaid who longed to know more than her ocean home and her people. A fisherman trapped her in a net, couldn't bear to keep her. His eyes were lonely and caught her more surely than the net. So she evoked a magic that allowed her to walk upon the shore. She became his wife. They lived off a cliff of the ocean for many years until the one day the fisherman rode out to sea and did not return. It does nothing for me. Honestly, the cover is questionable. It's very childish. This is marketed as fantasy, historical fiction, historical fiction, and adult. And the cover just feels very young to me. So this one holds no appeal to me. I will not be running out to grab that one just not interested. Now the rest of the books are all on the 26th of June, so later in the month. First one being All We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen. She does a ton of really fluffy contemporaries that people seem to really, really love. I read a whole bunch of them back in the day. I am not invested in any more of them. This is a new novel from a new like set of characters. So I know a lot of hers tend to like play off of other ones. This is a new one. And this one is about Nina who's living the good life after marrying into Nashville's elite. More recently her husband made a fortune selling his tech business and their adored son has been accepted to Princeton. Yet sometimes the middle class small town girl in Nina wonders if she's strayed from the person she once was. Tom is a single dad working multiple jobs while struggling to raise his headstrong daughter Lila. His road has been lonely, long, and hard, but he finally starts to relax after she's accepted, his daughter's accepted to a Windsor Academy. And apparently, I don't know what happens here. There's scandal. I just have absolutely zero interest in this. This does look like it is a women's chick lit fiction, more adult aged, and I just no, no interest. We actually have another fantasy that I will not be reading, and this one is Daughters of the Night Sky by Amy K. Runyon. And this one is a historical fantasy. This is a novel inspired by the most celebrated regiment in the Red Army about a woman's sacrifice, courage, and love of a war. So maybe it's not fantasy. Historical fiction? Yes, historical fiction, fiction, historical war, and World War II. All of those are like things that I don't read. I don't read World War II. I don't read historical fiction. I don't want any of that in the books that I read. This is about 1941 Russia and a young pilot young female pilot. Not for me. And that's like a personal reading preference. It has nothing to do with the author or the ratings or anything like that. This one is a 4.19 and there's about 5,000, 6,000 ratings on it. It says it comes out June 26th of 2018. How can that many people have read it? It's an indie author so maybe she's getting it traditionally published now or they're redoing a version of it. So this has to be out because there's ratings on here from October of 2017. In October 2017, it had an art copy from NetGalley. So this must have been out before and they're re-releasing it. Regardless, I'm not reading it. Then we have the last one, which I am mildly interested in, but I will not be running out to get it. And that is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I loved My Lady Jane. I thought it was a really fun satirical look at um, a historical fiction. This one is not one that has anything to do with me. This is historical fiction, young adult retellings, fantasy, historical. The first one was about My Lady Jane, which was like a queen. This one is about Jane Eyre. I have not read Jane Eyre, so I don't know the source material. I am assuming that, that this would not be as nearly amusing if I don't know the source material. I have no interest in the source material, and I just don't think that this one is for me. 
I didn't think I was going to love My Lady Jane. I ended up getting it in an owl crate and really enjoying it, but this one just holds zero sway over me, even though I love the writers. So I'll probably wait and see what other people say, um, maybe see if I can get it from my library if the buzz is really great. Jane Eyre embarks on a new life as a governess. She meets one dark brooding Mr. Rochester, despite their, despite their significant age gap and his uneven temper, they fall in love. And reader, she marries him. Or does she prepare for an adventure of gothic proportions in which all is not as it seems, a certain gentleman is hiding more than skeletons in his closet, and one orphan Jane Eyre, aspiring author Charlotte Bronte, and a supernatural investigator Alexander Blackwood are about to be drawn together on the most epic haunt this side of Wuthering Heights. I want to want to read it, but I just don't. So that one's probably going to be a no-go. But let's go into a couple of things that I am interested in that are coming out in June. First, Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. You guys know I absolutely love that series. So I will definitely be reading that. I do not think I'm going to run out to buy it in June. I want to read it before spoilers, but I just don't have a budget to grab it in June or probably a TBR that allows me to read it in June. But I am very, very interested in that. I'm also interested in Province by Carolyn Kepnes. This is a new book by her, so not in her you world. New thriller about the obsessive nature of love when an intensifying relationship between best friends is disrupted by a kidnapping. I love best friend stories and I really do like her writing style, so I am interested in checking that one out. The Kiss Quotient is by Helene Hung, and this was one that Chelsea actually got as an arc and really, really loved, so I am interested in that one. And then the next one and the last one that I'm really interested in in June is called Tell Me No Lies, and that is the sequel to Follow Me Back, which I did read and actually really liked. It was about a, like, a social media, like, pop star, and he starts, like, a Twitter romance with somebody, like, one of his fans, and then something goes awry at the end of that book. There is a sequel to it. I am interested in that one. That one's by A.V. Geiger, and I will probably try to read that one, but I'm going to see if it's on Hoopla or on my library. Probably won't run out and buy it right away. I'll wait until it's on Book Outlet, but it is one that I'm interested in if you're wondering what I'm interested in that's coming out. There's also Invisible Ghost by Robin Schneider, which looks like it could be relatively interesting. The Bird and the Blade by Megan Bannon has an amazing cover. I'm mildly interested in that one. Fat Girl on a Plane, I did get I did get approved for an arc of that, so I will be reading that one soon. And that one is by Kelly DeVos. So that one, hopefully, I will be enjoying. Also super interested in Not the Girls You're Looking For by Amina Maysafi. That one I asked for an arc, did not hear anything so I don't think I'm getting an arc for it but I'm really interested in that one. That's what I am not interested in buying. A couple of the ones that I'm interested in but probably won't run out to buy right away. So even the ones that I'm like interested in seeing what people think about them as they come out I'm still not going to run out to purchase. So that's been my anti-haul for June releases. If you guys like this series definitely let me know and I can continue to do them. I think it's a lot of fun to talk about what I'm interested in, what I'm not interested in, when I can try to like maybe bring down the hype or let you know that even if something is super, super talked about, if it's something that you know you're not going to enjoy, like maybe hold back. You don't have to have it just because everybody else is loving it if you know it's not your reading taste. So that's been it for this particular video. If you liked it, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, comment down below, click subscribe, click that little notification bell, and I will talk to all of you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.